Well, folks, I'm here with uh, Wes Gordon, and uh, he's going to talk about invisible greatness in this video. And by the way, he and I just met for the first time today, and I've never done a video with anybody up on the first meeting, although he had seen some of my videos, and we have a mutual friend, Steve Hart, who I was going to do a video with, but Steve has other commitments, and so... Wes and I are making our very first video together, and Wes, talk about invisible greatness. All right, thank you, Ron. This is, this is really great you're giving me this opportunity to share this meeting with you like this. I, I love this technology, it's, it's, it's just awesome. About invisible greatness, though, the way that come about was, you know, it's a long story of my, tra uh, my journey through religion and spirituality. And when I was 11 years old, I was in the religious world, the re religious system, and I had an experience that was life-changing for me. But at 11 years old, it's real tricky to try to figure out what that meant and what it was about. And I got caught up in that system, or at least for me, that felt like I could never win. I was always being in this loop of a victim of sorts. I can I can never measure up to the standard that this system seemed to have put in place. So I started questioning God or what I thought was God, my concept of God, trying to figure out what's what's the deal here. And I always felt like in my heart there was something missing, that I wasn't getting the whole story. So I did like most people after I got a little older. I couldn't live up to those standards, so I turned on myself out of guilt and confusion and misunderstanding. And I see a lot of people in the religious system do this. They turn around and become so uh, burdened with guilt and shame that they torture themselves for years trying to figure out why they're not good enough for God. So right off the bat, I knew something wasn't right. I so can relate. <laughs> yeah. So I, I did like a lot of people do. I said, okay, if God's not under that rock, where does he live? Cause he's got a lot of houses so i'm gonna go check them out because when i was younger my mother took me on a grand tour of catholics baptists presbyterians lutherans pentecostals we went to prayer meetings in people's houses because she was determined because she wasn't happy with her marriage to find out you know where the real god is and i had an experience during that that time well, as I got older and couldn't live up to that, I started running from it because that experience ignited something in me that let me know there's more to this world than what I can see. But I really didn't understand what that more was. So I did the typical, you know, the girls, the parties, the alcohol, some drugs, just trying to escape, numb that. You see, I never went down that road. In fact, uh, I've never been involved in drugs. I held a joint once. Once. <laughs> and uh, Well, my main poison was alcohol. And the reason I indulged so much in it was to turn off that signal, that calling in my heart. I couldn't live up to that, that standard, so I didn't want to hear it pulling on me all the time because I knew there was more to this life, but I wasn't sure how that worked. So I started going to different churches outside of the regular religious system, like Unity and uh, Science of Mind and Agape with Michael Beckwith. I was looking in all forms of spirituality, New Age stuff, crystals, Reiki, you name it. If, if it was there, I'd poke my nose in it. Edgar Casey. I mean, I had a, a, a thirst that was unquenchable with the knowledge piece. And I kept looking and looking. And... I could see pieces and parts that had some God in it, or at least to me, but I never seen that power in the, in the people. I didn't see a, a deep happiness. I seen a surface happiness or a form of peacefulness, but I didn't, it didn't feel right. There was something missing and I didn't know what that was. So, I was still running, up, running away from it up until like almost three years now. And I lost a 13-year uh, career job two and a half years ago, almost three. And that's when everything come to a screeching halt. I mean, I, I had faced these problems before. What did you do, by the way? What was your career? 
uh, I had, I'd started out as a plumber because I'm the type of individual I can do just about anything. And that's not a brag. That just means I apply myself and try to learn, but I didn't love that job. But what I was doing, I got into it. I was, a, I had associate's degree in electronics and I wanted to try that on for a change. I was tired of being dirty and smelly and sweating all the time. And I wanted to sit in an office and see how that was. So I did that and I was really good at it, but I wasn't happy. Cause see, I kept thinking my happiness was outside of me. It was in a job or a new position or a new girlfriend or a new house. I thought, Oh, there'd be happiness there. If I just get, get everything that everybody says you need to be happy, it'll work out. And what I started discovering over time is that wasn't true. So with this job, because I didn't know how to really love myself, I started acting out because my deep inner self was crying out for more. So I got to a point where it was so painful, there wasn't anything I could do to distract myself from that pain. And I'm talking about an inner psychological pain that would at times feel almost physical. It was so intense. And I couldn't drink it away. I couldn't get a girlfriend to take my distraction away. I couldn't exercise it away. I couldn't do anything. And that freaked me out. Cause I was, I was in my fifties, you know, I'm 56 now. So I was like, I've never had this happen. If I usually, when I turned off all the distractions, the pain would lessen or seem to go away. It did. It didn't. I just got emptier and I was reaching a point of, you know, I don't know what I'm going to do. I feel like I'm going to kill myself if I can't figure this out. Cause it was, it was, it was miserable. So I started reaching out to some friends in the spiritual community uh, Armand from Armand and Angeline. Oh, you know Armand? Yes, I reached out to Armand. I've I, known Armand for a long time before. I knew Armand before Angelina. Yeah. Well, I called out to him at work one day on lunch break, and I said, dude, I'm losing my mind. I said, I don't know what's going on, but I'm in so much pain, and I can't turn it off. And he goes, wow, that's awesome, Wes. I said, awesome, what are you talking about? I feel like I'm going to go die. He goes, you're waking up. I'm like, waking up? I feel like I'm dying up. What are you talking about? He goes, this is wonderful. This is the best thing that could ever happen to you. And I thought the guy was insane, literally. But I was so desperate for any comfort, knowledge, insight, or wisdom. I was like, tell me something. And he talked to me for a while, and he said, look, I'll shave 10 to 15 years off your spiritual journey. He goes, you're waking up and you need some tools to work with. And he told me to pick up uh, Michael Singer's book. Uh, can't think of the name of it right now. I'm going blank. That's okay. I do that too. <laughs> yeah. Michael Singer's got two books out, but I can't think of the name of the one right now. But I picked that sucker up and started listening to it on audio. It, the Untethered Soul. Oh, yeah. I've heard that title. I probably read it too a long time ago. Yeah, Ron, I burnt that thing up. I was so hungry. I put it on MP3 player and I would listen to it even in my sleep. I was so desperate. I was like, I got to figure this out. And if, if I got to brainwash myself to get out of this pain, I'm going to do it. Right. Well, right after that phone call to Armand, I got fired. And I've never been fired from a job in my life. And that totally fried my cookie. I went home and this was like do or die moment for me. Cause in my mind, I had just lost everything that I thought made me important. I did not realize how much I thought I was my job or my house or my car. And it blowed my mind. And then people started treating me different because they don't really want to say it to your face, but they're kind of like, you've got a disease right now because you don't fit into the program. You need to get another job. I really would like to help you, but I don't know what to do for you. But, you know, they try to be sympathetic, but you can feel that energy. But anyway, I went into deep depression. I wasn't drinking. I wasn't doing anything. I'd, I'd put a complete halt to all that, period. So after laying in my bed for a few months and thinking about killing myself, it came to a point where it was like a voice said, you either check out or you check in. What are you going to do? And all I could think of was, I'm going to try to find out what that God thing was, that experience I had, 
So I started meditating. I had meditated in the past on and off, very lightweight, and I'd always prayed. But something was telling me to start meditating. And I did it in my own way. I didn't go by any technique that some book told me. I just knew, watch your breath and be real quiet. And I let, it, I let it naturally progress from there. And I started riding my bike every day up and down A1A for exercise because I was unemployed, trying to find new work at this age in my field that I hadn't got any paperwork for the 13 years to prove I had credentials, which came smacking in my face because everybody wanted the paperwork to prove I could do what I said I could do. So anyway, I was up against it. And I started the meditation stuff and slowly, I mean, really slowly reading the untethered soul. He told me to get the infinite way, the untethered soul. And he told me to go to Georgia to Vinasa. Uh, it's a meditation thing they do for a week where you, you don't talk for 10 days. I've had people invite me to go to something that you're describing. I, I don't remember the name of it, but. Yes, where you don't talk for a week. That, that, yeah. that whole scenario I'm familiar, familiar with, but I never did it. <laughs> yeah, well, that was the three things he told me to do. So I jumped on the untethered soul first. And I started the meditation and I started exercising. And slowly things started shifting. And I do mean slowly. <laughs> and it was like climbing up a hill weighted down with all the lead in the world. But as I would meditate, I would get like inner messages or insights. And that's where Invisible Greatness came about. I started out on Facebook and I started this, this intuition said, get up in the morning and type out what you, what you heard in meditation. Just type it out. So I would type it out. And after a while, it was like, you need to post that on Facebook. I was like, what? Are you kidding me? I mean, that's a huge leap. Put that out on Facebook? You've got to be crazy. So I thought about it for a while. So I took one, put it out there, and I just intuitively added pictures to it. And it had a message of sorts. And that's where invisible greatness comes from because I was in meditation asking, you know, what should I call this? I have no clue. And then it came to me, invisible greatness. And I go, what the heck is that? <laughs> well, what it is is you have within you this invisible greatness that you're unaware of, or most people are unconscious that it exists. And that was part of what happened to me at 11 years old. And all this started being revealed to me over time, slowly. I heard in my meditations, all things shall be revealed. And it emphasized the word all. I thought it meant all my personal crap would be shown to me over time, which that happened. <laughs> but it was way bigger than that. And I've always been Christ energy centered because I felt like that was my first true love was my experience with that Christ energy. At 11, yeah. Yeah. So I felt like I had failed that, but this was like a resurrection time. And it came back to me about the Christ consciousness, the energies. And I just started sharing more and more on Facebook as time went on. And then eventually it progressed into making some videos. And I would just share whatever was brought up or intuitive, intuitively felt like I should express with no agenda. It was just like, here's Wes, here's my guts, here's my life. This is what I experienced today. If it helps you, great. If it doesn't, great. Either way, there's no agenda. Just trying to, I guess, heal myself and help others in the process if that happens. But what I discovered and I am discovering is this, what you call the second coming of Christ. This awakening that's happening. It's happening all over the entire world, not just in America. I mean, this thing is it's beyond religion. <laughs> yes. And I also started seeing for me personally a marriage between religion and spirituality. They both have some truths, but they are missing something in the middle. And I was kind of shown that you can bridge that gap because these guys have got certain things that, that they need from the spirituality aspect and vice versa. And that's not an easy, easy pill to take on because, you know, you mentioned the word God. And most people just they just get a, a smell in their nose and go, forget you, pal. 
Yeah, they you know, immediately, religion has poisoned so many people to even the investigation of spiritual matters or of divine matters or whatever, however you want to label them. Uh, yeah. People have an, uh, almost a, a superimposed aversion to that kind of thing because, it, because it's been so corrupted. Yes. And see, I totally understand that because I was a victim of it myself. But I started asking questions, deep questions in meditation, you know, questions like, Christ, how did you heal people? Jesus, how did you do that? I want to know. And things started being shown to me. And, I, and, and it's, uh, it's, it's very strange how it develops and progresses. But uh, my main message is just to let people know that there is a power in you that's not activated. Some, I mean, I even see this in spiritual people and religious people. They're not fully tapping into and don't know they're not into this energy. See, Jesus Christ came, came here to show us a mystery and explain some things to us, and the message got twisted. It got manipulated by men. Of course. <laughs> right. And that's, that's that, you know, to me, that, that's very sad, but at the same time, it doesn't... Uh, negate the principles that he was trying to share because I was I always felt like Christ came to liberate us and to set us free and to make us strong emotional loving beings that knew what we were about and I wasn't getting that message completely through all the different things I was studying but in my heart I knew that's what he was about so as time has went on I'm starting to see and learn and experience those different teachings and understandings so that you can live a power-filled life. And it's not something you're not putting on a show. You're not trying to be, you know, like the, the guru or the, the person that seems to be eternally happy all the time. No, you're real. You're, you're you totally don't wear the mask, huh? <laughs> exactly. You don't need the mask. And, you know, there's, to me, there's like a new energy out there now, or maybe it's always been there, but I've not been aware of it. But it's about being spontaneous and open and honest and not having an agenda. Saying, look, here I am. This is me. I'm talking to you from my heart. This is what I've experienced. I know you can have a better life. And it doesn't come with all that shame and guilt, but there is work that has to be done. Absolutely. You, you just don't get away from that part of it. But I've over time discovered there's a large amount of people out there that don't want to know or don't even realize that that's even a possibility. They just, they haven't had that experience. And uh, I'm just wanting, you know, I'm like a little trumpet shouting out there going, look, it's real. It's out you have there. a job now? No, I went into business for myself. Oh, okay. And I'm trying that shoe on, which is a totally different paradigm from working from someone all the, you know most of your life and then shifting. Well, that's how we are able to meet at Steve's uh, coffee talk. Exactly. Um, in the early, more late morning of uh, weekday. <laughs> yeah. You, know, you don't have any job to go to. Yeah, being a trying to be an entrepreneur or being an entrepreneur is a paradigm shift in itself. So, you know, it's, I've been experiencing many, many shifts, but I'm also reacquainting myself with that energy, that invisible greatness, that Christ consciousness that I experienced at a very young age, that door, that consciousness level in my heart via my mind is being opened up again. And I am feeling and living that energy. And it's not me. It doesn't come from me. I actually get more of that energy in my life when I myself get out of the way. When I quit thinking I know what to do, you know, prayer was a whole different thing for me from what I've been, been studying and getting in meditations is prayer isn't about telling God what he needs to do for you. Sorry. He already knows what you need. And it's the energy that's within you already that needs to be expressed and realized. 
that's not a big secret if you know about it and, and you activate it. Most of us go around, though, thinking God's a Santa Claus. I get on my knees and I give him my grocery list of what I need to make my life better. As if some energetic being of some kind doesn't already know everything that's already needed. I mean, it's, it's just, I don't want to go down that rabbit hole, but I'm just saying I learned a whole new way to pray. And it's getting quiet and getting out of the way and allowing that energy to express through you. And then I personally have never been involved in the materialistic approach to religion or spirituality. Many people that I know are, uh, they use their spirituality or their religion to make money. Yes. I've not gone down that road and, and, and in fact avoided that road throughout my life. I mean, I've had to have jobs obviously, uh, but by the same token, it's, that's never been, the, the end all, the thing that I've always asked for God is manifest your kingdom on earth. And I have a, maybe my handicap is I believe I know what that kingdom looks like. There's truth, there's justice, there's peace. Everybody is given opportunity. Leaders don't lie. Uh, if they lie, they're not leaders. You know, things like that have been right. foundational for me. Right. Well, that's where, you know, we discussed earlier today. He, uh, he kept always telling us, Christ did, he said, my kingdom is not of this world. Well, what world is it of? And then there's a scripture that says God is a spirit and he must be worshipped or honored are connected with in spirit and in truth. Well, you can't see a spirit unless you got supposedly these gifts. And if his kingdom is not of this world, then what world is he living in? So I started going deeper in my, in my search to try to figure out how does that make sense? And it slowly, it gets revealed to me that it's not about what we see around us. It's about allowing a power to be manifested through us that will transform what is around us. Because Well, that's what I've been waiting for, the transforming of the world around me, because I want it to resonate with the world within me. Yes. And it's, that's a challenge. <laughs> yes. And it's not a simple one, because we have a little God. Everybody has a little God. I call it ego nature, ego nature energy. It thinks it's God. It thinks it knows what it needs and how to do it the best way. I constantly hear in my meditations, quit trying to be God and just allow God. And if God's a spirit and I've got to worship him or honor him or communicate with him or align with him in spirit and in truth, it's my truth. It's my open heart as open and honest and as exposed as I can be to that energy with nothing in between and, 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 and aligning myself with that by getting silent. See, my ego runs into mind, the, the, the duality nature, the good and the bad, the right and the wrong. It, it lives in a limited paradigm, which is not where heaven's at. And that energy changes that. But it's not easy to step away from that behavior or that nature. Because it thinks it's God. And when you start stepping on its toes, things can get pretty dicey until you start realizing that it isn't a power. You, you, you quit reacting to it, to that voice, that monkey mind in your head always telling you, you got to do this, you got to be about this, you can't let that happen. Trying to control everything is totally wearing you out. I mean, your spiritual energy is just being sucked out of you. And that's where Untethered Soul helped me get a real good mindset on why is that happening? Where is it coming from? And is that really me? So if you haven't read that book, I highly suggest. Yeah, I actually need to be, I should have been taking notes while you're talking, but I wasn't. <laughs> uh, yeah, Untethered Soul. By Michael Singer. He actually lives up in North Florida here. And he has a temple up there where he holds some Sunday services for people that meditate and want to, you know, go deeper in this spiritual journey. Yeah. What was the other book you named? It's called Infinite Way. It's Infinite by, Way. And that's him too? No, that's by Joel, oh, Goldsmith. Joel, Joel S. Goldsmith. 
that's an old pioneer dude back in the 40s up until 1964 that was experiencing and sharing insights about God's principles. Right. Yeah, I've read a bunch of his books too, and I have some friends that recommend them even more recently. This year I've had people recommend that I go back and read some of his books. Yeah, I was quite shocked that the Agape Church, Michael Beckwith in California, he's actually got a person out there that's teaching classes on it now. All right. Yeah, do, uh, wrap up some of the things because I would like to get this up uh, yet this afternoon in a half an hour, and I've got some processing to do. Okay, awesome. I would just say this. I have a group on Facebook called Invisible Greatness. It's a private group group members if you want to join that and share some of your experiences and go deeper down this rabbit hole of spirituality religion new age you're more than welcome to join i i share some of my insights and videos there and it's wide open to anybody that wants to share in there but it's a group so no one else can see what we're sharing in that group i also have a, a facebook page that's called invisible greatness and then i have a personal page but basically i just want I just want people to be aware that you don't have to be miserable. You don't have to be beaten down and you're not alone. There's a energy and a force within you and all around you that loves you beyond measure, but we can't see it because we're blinded by this ego nature that controls us. And when you can start to let go of those pieces, the lights start coming on and the, your life in, gets enriched. I mean, literally, things start transforming. People show up. Things happen that you wouldn't expect. You'd be like, how, how could that be possible? And it just does. There's no way to explain it. It's just you're aligning yourself with your God-given spiritual self that was given to you at birth. But we're not told that. No, we're not told a lot of things that are important. I know. And we're fed a lot of things that aren't important. Contrary. Totally. Yeah, but you got a Geiger counter inside. You know the truth when you hear it. Whether or not you can even back it up with some books, inside your heart, there's a there's a thing that happens, and you just know. I mean, just you just know. And for you at that moment, that's good for you. That's right for you, because we're all we're all trying. We're all learning. No, none of us have got it figured out. Yeah, I know. I don't. I. Let, I know less now than I did when I was younger <laughs> or than I thought I knew. <laughs> right. That, what's that old saying? The more I learn, the less I know. Something like that. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Anyway, I do appreciate, Wes, that you took time to, uh, to share a little bit of your story. And we'll probably make some other videos. Now I'll be adding you to my list and encouraging people. I guess I can... Uh, can share the stuff that's on your card that you gave me, which is printed on both sides. Nice card. Absolutely. And uh, that peop that way people will know how to reach you, and I'll work that into the blurb, what I call the blurb. Okay. And, uh, I appreciate you taking time to share with us, and uh, I'm glad Steve recommended uh, recommended that I make a video with you, and here we are, and number one. So. <laughs> well, thank you, Ron. I appreciate it. It's good energy. Thank you, and, and God bless, and namaste. Namaste.